Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be your Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray responsively by half verse Psalm 22 with me this morning. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry, from the words of my distress. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They, they, trusted, and you delivered them. they cried out to you and were delivered. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They, they curl their lips and back their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. And kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You, you were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls and surround me. 
They open wide their jaws at me. Like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is in my breast is melting away. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. A reading from the book of Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Please be seated. Okay, so it's stewardship season. And we're all thinking about and praying on how much of our time and our money and our gifts we're willing and able to give to St. Philip's. We've got our pledge cards. Some of you have already turned it in. Good job. And we're hearing about people who pledge and are involved at St. Philip's. And we're hearing sermons about giving and stewardship and loving the church and each other. And now, I'm supposed to stand up here and give you another stewardship sermon based on today's readings. Let me say that again. And now, I'm supposed to stand up here and give you another stewardship sermon based on today's readings without making you all mad. (laughs) So... Part of me wants to completely ignore all of those readings, throw the whole bulletin out, and go rogue and preach on some other completely different passage that is perhaps a whole lot easier to preach on when in stewardship season. Maybe a passage like, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, from the synoptic gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or... Honor the Lord with your possessions, from Proverbs, that's an easy one. Or even, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and those who dwell in it, as the psalmist writes. But no. Sadly, I don't think that's a good idea. And thus, I'm stuck. Or more importantly, you're stuck with these readings, with an angry Job who has a bitter complaint, a psalmist who is a worm and no man forsaken by God, Paul's letter to the Hebrews, who graciously reminds us that we are naked and laid bare before God, and finally, this wonderful, uplifting, inspiring gospel reading from Mark. Go, sell what you own, because it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And now, a stewardship sermon. (laughs) No. I'm definitely not talented enough to make this work. There is no way I'm going to tell you all to give up all your possessions, all your money, your belongings, all the things that you have worked so hard to earn and achieve and become. No way am I engaging in that battle. It would not be pretty. So instead, today, I want us to look at some of the tensions To start, the tensions in this gospel passage, the tension between the rich man and Jesus, the tension between eternal life and the kingdom of God, the tension between giving it all up to follow Jesus and receiving a hundredfold once you do, and not least, the tension between the first who will be last and the last who will be first. All of these sort of fall under that overarching tension of our attitude and approach towards wealth and our attitude and approach towards salvation. And when I say our, I don't mean us individually. I mean our as in society, the church, St. Philip's humanity today and in history and even Jesus. Because in the culture we live today, there seems to be a pretty big emphasis on the material, the possession, the accumulated wealth. There's even an entire movement in the Christian faith that says our material possessions are a direct reflection of how blessed we are by God. 
I have to say, I'm curious how the prosperity gospel movement handles today's gospel passage. But this emphasis isn't new. It's been this case forever. Even back in Jesus' time for the Romans and even the Jews, possessions were an indication of blessings. So Jesus calling out the rich man for all his possessions is also kind of like Jesus calling out all of society. How do I inherit eternal life? By giving away all that you have. Forget about how society measures success. Give it all away. Have nothing. Another side note, I feel it very intriguing that the rich man chooses the word inherit. He asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Because inherit implies someone else already did all of the work, and I just get it because I was born into the right family. This Greek word is only used three times in scripture, once here and then twice in Luke when we get this same story, and also when Jesus is prompted to tell the parable of the Good Samaritan. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Perhaps it is this word that sets Jesus on edge. Perhaps it is the idea that some people are just privileged enough to earn things without having to work for them. And perhaps that's why the rich man goes away grieving, because he knows that eternal life will not simply be given to him like an inheritance. Instead, eternal life, life in the kingdom of God, will be about transformation and character change. Life in Christian community is about transformation and character change. If mainstream society seems to say, buy the next best thing, or get the newest shiniest item, or subscribe to the newest fad, then Christianity, Jesus, seems to be saying, transform and change. Don't buy the next best thing. Instead, become the next best thing. Become something different. Place value on something different. Instead of placing value on objects, place value on time and on community. How many of us know someone, perhaps even ourselves, who fell into that trap of, if I just work harder, more hours, longer days, then I'll make enough money to finally get to live my life, only to see life slip away, happening while the person was too busy working? Christianity, the church, St. Philip's, this community, we offer something different. We offer the opportunity to live into God's call for each of us to be in community, to love unconditionally in all that we do and all that we are. We offer the opportunity to see that society's image of success and God's image of success may not be quite the same. We offer the opportunity to live into the transformation and character change that Jesus is asking of the rich man in today's gospel reading. We offer St. Philip's. St. Philip's isn't just a church building or buildings or almost a building. St. Philip's is also a mindset, a way of living. St. Philip's is a community of believers who really, truly live their beliefs. We, St. Philip's, we get what church means, what being Christian means. After all, you all know that vision, right? You maybe remember it that one Sunday when Father Eric had us all open an envelope that had the vision printed up on a beautiful pen drawing by Ricky. It's also printed at the top of our bulletins, in case you're wondering, go ahead and pull out your bulletin. Go to the first page of it, the front cover. We're going to all read it together 
out loud. It begins with we at St. Philip's. You ready? We at St. Philip's Church strive to love God and love others in all we do. And part of that, yes, does mean giving away our riches, our possessions, our treasure, at least some of it, especially in terms of what a stewardship pledge card is asking for. And part of that also means giving away our time, our talents, the gifts we have, the skills we have. And part of that also means being present, being here, being an active member of the community that is St. Philip's. And when you're here, when you're part of that community, you see another level of tension that starts to emerge. You see a tension between who we actually are and who we seek to be as St. Philip's. You see a tension between what society's image of success is and what God's image of success is, especially for this church. So, no, I don't need you to sell what you own and give the money to the poor and then gather up your treasure in heaven. That's not necessary. I don't need you to leave your house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields. That's also not necessary. I don't want you to feel guilt or the lament and suffering of Job or the psalmist or even Paul's intended audience of his letter to the Hebrews. In fact, I want you to feel joy, the joy in choosing to be a part of St. Philip's a part of God's creation here, this little corner of the kingdom of God made in love, with love, for love, for you and for me, even for those who merely walk by on the sidewalk never to actually come inside. I want you to feel the love of Christ in this community which only exists because you all are here claiming St. Philip's as your own, participating in St. Philip's, owning St. Philip's, pledging to be St. Philip's. I want you to feel the joy of creatively building this church, this parish, this community into whatever we want it to be, especially in light of our vision especially in light of Jesus' version of success. You don't have to give up all that you own. This isn't about guilt. This isn't about accusing each other of not giving enough or doing enough either. This is about all of us, you and me and everyone who is part of St. Philip's, even those who are barely associated. This is about how we make our creatively imagined concept of St. Philip's a reality. That sounds like eternal life. That sounds like the kingdom of God. All of us working together in love to make St. Philip's the best we could possibly imagine it could be. So let's get to work. Amen. Turning to the Nicene Creed, let us stand together and declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down 
the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Rita Fitzgerald. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of our name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange with one another a sign of peace. As you are finding your seats, I want to introduce to you this morning our vestry person of the day is our junior warden, Dave Hamm. He is here and present and ready to respond to any questions or conversation you may have. He'll either be in the narthex or outside following the service, and you are invited to approach him and ask any questions or, again, enter into any discussion you would like to. Thank you, David. Welcome if you're visiting. We welcome you to St. Philip's. We are blessed by your presence and, and hope that we are able to fellowship with you a little bit after service. If you would like to introduce yourself to myself or Deacon Pam or Mother Lisa, we'll be outside as well after the service so we can all have our masks off and talk and, and maybe understand each other a little better. I was also told, somebody whispered in our ear, that our reminder fairy has returned. And so Muriel, I don't know, where, there you are. Welcome home. It's good to have you back. One important announcement that I do need to pass along to you is this coming Wednesday will be our last Wednesday for porch sitting with the clergy. 
It will be suspended until we get into the spring or into better weather. We end up, we have to go to a clergy conference this month, later this month, and then November hits. And I know from before COVID hit, the robustness of some of us to sit out in the cold weather is not as robust as the rest of us may have. I spent a lot of time alone on the porch, so we're going to just not meet during the winter, and we will re restart again in, in the spring. Lastly, all the news that is news that's fit to be print is on your blue sheet that has been the green sheet with the announcements that tell you what's coming up and what's going to be happening in the parish this coming week. So please do pay attention to those. One of the things that's on there that's of note is, uh, clear, uh, what's it called? Theology Uncorked has quite a lively discussion topic this coming week. You may want to make sure that you're there and ready to, uh, to enter into some fun discussion. We do enjoy each other's opinions. Again, we're not there to give you the party line. We are there to hear each other's thoughts and experiences and, and uh, how you're working out your theology in these areas. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, I forgot the ministry minute. Rose, come up. One of the things that we're doing that I forgot about, that I shouldn't have forgot about, is that we're trying to move from just having stewardship as something that takes place in the fall of the year when we're trying to build the budget for the coming year and trying to, to initiate something called year-round stewardship. Year-round stewardship has to do with involving yourself with your time and your talent as well as treasure. And so we're inviting members of our ministries to come forward and share with us. There's 50 some odd ministries, and this week we're going to learn about greeters and bridge builders. Yes? Okay. Rose, if you want to go up there, you can take your mask off to speak if you'd like to. Well, that was a great introduction. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am Rose Dayhill, and I, along with my co-leader, Joanne Valente, and a wonderful team, we have developed a new ministry called the Newcomer Ministry. Basically, it's greeters and bridgers, or as my husband enjoys calling it, grabbers, <laughs> grabbers and keepers. <laughs> <laughs> It's, in simple terms, it re greeters, they welcome. And bridgers, they help newcomers assimilate and um, help them grow into ministries and parish life. Now, um, our greeters, you've probably noticed after church, they are, are standing with clergy. And along with clergy, they are welcoming, they are thanking visitors for worshiping with us. They're also um, answering questions and even collecting information if they would like to be contacted in the future. Bridgers, Bridgers are coming soon, but we need you. We need volunteers. Uh, it's the new part of the program, and um, it's a very fun and easy and simple role. And in fact, many of you have probably done this. It's as simple as calling someone, saying hi. It's as simple as maybe inviting someone to take a walk or have a cup of coffee, or in my case, maybe a glass of wine. And uh, it really is, it's easy and fun, but very important to helping, again, newcomers assimilate into parish life. And um, I'm, in fact, I'm thinking many of you have done this at some point or another in your lifetimes because it's just something you've done, but maybe not under a ministry. Um, you can do it individually or as a couple. So if you're interested, please let me know, Joanne, clergy. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks. Thank you, Rose. Sorry about that. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. A reminder that if you are located in the balcony, please remain there and we'll bring communion to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom, all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the Spirit. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.